Hello everyone. <clears throat> In the second video lecture of this week, um, we will focus on the so-called international style that emerges in the very context of the seafaring trade network that we were talking about in the Eastern Mediterranean in the previous video. Um, I explained how um, on the, the entrepreneurial network of seafaring merchant ships um, circumambulating the Mediterranean formed a fascinating um, connectivity between the Levant, uh, Anatolia, Egypt, and the Aegean, connecting these communities who shared um, with each other raw materials um, like copper and tin, but also foodstuffs um, like olives, olive oil, um, wine, and fish sauce, but also um, prestigious luxury goods on, um, on artwork. Um, um, uh, and so circulating art at this time period was also associated with the diplomatic network. Um, uh, we talked about the possibility of diplomatic gifts that were mentioned in the letters. Um, in this lecture, we're going to take a look at, um, close look at the iconography and style of some of these objects that we have from the late Bronze Age and speculate about um, the possibility of these um, acting as may maybe diplomatic gifts. Um, last week, we already looked at this fascinating wall painting at the palace of Zimrilim uh, from Mari from around 1780, um, a wall painting um, that in uh, a kind of a ceremonial courtyard, it's a two-story courtyard, where uh, we see um, uh, the depiction of what we call the investiture of Zimrilim, the becoming king of the, the, the ritual moment of Zimrilim being given uh, insignia of kingship by uh, the goddess Ishtar. Um, so surrounded by a fantastic world of uh, of mythological creatures um, and goddesses and gods, um, and um, some really extraordinary um, sort of vegetation and um, uh, uh, hybrid creatures as well. Um, and, and, um, and we talked about how the, the technique of the wall painting is a tempera wall painting, a true fresco, which actually shares um, some technological um, aspects with the um, Minoan wall paintings. And I'm showing you an example here from the island of Thera, Santorini, uh, from the site of Akrotiri, uh, the West House. Um, and the, this is the flotilla fresco uh, from room five. Um, where we actually see one of the most astonishing scenes, astonishing landscapes, where <clears throat> we see a very similar kind of um, sort of fantastical landscapes, um, uh, sort of hybrid and sort of mythological creatures like a griffin sort of roaming through this landscape and um, sort of palm trees and so on. <clears throat> and um, technologically, as I mentioned, also very similar to um, to the painting in uh, wall painting, uh, tempera wall painting in Mari. Um, so we're really talking about um, sort of really sort of, you know, Mari is in the middle of Euphrates on the border between Syria and Iraq. And then um, uh, Thera, the island of Thera is in the Aegean um, north of Crete. And so... Um, it's a long distance when you think about it, but um, but clearly there is some kind of an interaction going on uh, between the realm of the Aegean all the way to Mesopotamia. Um, and this kind of relationship already starts in the Middle Bronze Age, but peaks in the Late Bronze Age that we're um, talking about. This week we're um, reading um, an article by Marion Feldman, a professor Marion Feldman, who's a professor of Near Eastern Art um, in uh, Johns Hopkins University, uh, one of the prominent art historians um, uh, who work on the engineers today. Um, and so, and I'm showing you her book, Diplomacy by Design, Luxury Arts and International Style in the Engineer East. 
1400 to 1200 BCE, she wrote a book specifically on this time period that we're working on this, um, this, this week, the um, international style in the late Bronze Age. Um, and so she argued that uh, during this time, the participants in this well-knit trade uh, diplomacy, a uh, network of trade diplomacy and, and exchange, craftsmen and artisans produced works of art that were much more readily linked to a shared visual vocabulary, frequently uh, borrowing stylistic elements and iconographic elements from, uh, from neighboring cultures. So we start to see in, um, in, so, um, a... Um, uh, uh, in Near Eastern sort of ivory piece with uh, with uh, stylistic impact of Egyptian artists, for example, or Egyptian artists working in Syria, or Hittite artists working in Syria and and interacting and Hittites taking from Egyptians and so on. So Mary and Feldman have discussed this episode of the international age. Um, and um, and international style as an art historical phenomenon where we see an extensive sharing of this visual culture and the technologies of production and hybridity. So, um, um, this, um, in the previous lecture, we mentioned Amarna letters uh, between the brothers, you know, the Hittite king, the Egyptian pharaoh, and all the other kings in, the, in, in Western Asia, sending each other diplomatic gifts, uh, what they are called greeting gifts. Um, and uh, Marion Feldman have suggested that maybe um, some of the objects that we have, some of the very precious objects that we will see in a minute, um, uh, may have been examples of such gifts um, and that also uh, really talked about um, uh, the important politics, the political role of these gifts and what kind of diplomatic role these gifts are playing uh, in going back and forth between these different, uh, different kings. One, it really is a, a really great example um, of this is uh, is a gold bowl that was found at the ancient port city of Ugarit in northwestern Syria. Um, it was one of the really best candidates, in my opinion, and also this is what Marion also argues, um, really exquisitely produced and is a very visual style that is comfort comfortable um, uh, to understand as an international and intercultural with lots of hybridity. The small hemispherical bowl was made by beating red gold foil um, uh, onto a bitumen core. So this intricate composition of images created on the bowl's surface um, was uh, a technique that we call repoussé uh, was used um, um, and then the details are incised um, on the images uh, on the exterior um, itself. So. The composition is formed in terms of these bands, registers of mythological, uh, wild and mythological animals, idealized and natural vegetation, and hunters tracking wild beasts. Um, so when humans appear, they appear in these scenes mostly as hunters, as, where the animal actors are actually really um, the core of these um, of these narratives. If you look at this um, the drawing, a kind of really open drawing of this, um, in the widest band running around uh, the top of the bowl presents a fantastical landscape, very similar to remember that Minoan landscape, right? Um, including sphinxes, griffins, and stags interspersed with designs of voluted palmettes. And those voluted palmettes are kind of really vegetal references that are abstracted and kind of stylized into decorative forms here. We see rows of pomegranates. If you look at the inner circle and, uh, and sort of on the edges, you see rows of pomegranates. It's a... a um, a uh, symbol of uh, prosperity, um, symbolically placed uh, wild animals, including lions and bulls, uh, dominating that interior band. 
Um, close examination of the motifs used uh, to create this lively design and its pattern uh, of interlaced bands suggests a very careful mixing. Whoever the artist is, is they're doing a very careful mixing of Egyptian, Aegean, Mesopotamian, and East Mediterranean iconographic elements and stylistic uh, features. Um, it's a truly hybrid uh, product uh, that you can't look at it and say, this is Hittite, or you can't look at it and say, this is Egyptian. There's something confusing, there's something that is fundamentally shared in this, um, in this style. So one of uh, Marion Feldman's arguments was that these diplomatic gifts, um, if they're sent from one king to another, in order to not to insult each other, they really had to have this common language um, in terms of the, the messages that they would communicate. You couldn't send, an Egyptian pharaoh couldn't send an object to the Hittite king with a depiction of a war that in, in, in which the Egyptians are victorious and, you know, Hittites are losing. You, I mean, that would be rude, right? And so, um, so you have to choose topics that are somehow a little abstract in its kind of really, um, um, in its uh, visual, um, the stories that are told on it. Um, this ivory panel um, that was also found in Ugarit um, in the uh, Levantine coast um, must have similarly been a precious gift exchange between political elites. Um, it's a two ivory panel uh, uh, that must have been part of a furniture, probably the um, end of a bed um, or something like that. It's composed of a series of vertical plaques. Um, that are um, that are attached together. They're carved together. Um, the visual elements presents us a Levantine design, um, in general, with explicit references and quotations from Egypt, uh, Syria, uh, Aegean, and West Asia in general. So, if you look at individual scenes. Those are either topics are taken from the Middle East, um, like the centrally depicted goddess with wings, um, uh, you know, is that that's a Near Eastern mo motif, but also using Egyptian kind of really stylistic elements um, and so on. Um, so, um, again, uh, a really careful mixing of um, iconographic uh, elements and styles. This ivory uh, lid of ivory pixies, it's an um, ivory um, sort of, um, uh, uh, it's an ivory container, um, a small container called pixis where you would store um, uh, uh, jewelry or something like that. And so uh, the, this has a fascinating representation um, on it, um, a really highly skilled craftsmanship. You, and um, possibly, people have suggested possibly imported for e uh, Aegean uh, or carved by a Mycenaean artist or um, really heavily influenced by, uh, by the Aegean, um, Aegean art at that time. Um, what we see is a bare-breasted female figure uh, wearing a split uh, skirt standing on some kind of a rock or altar um, symmetrically surrounded by rampant goats um, who are feeding on her offering of uh, grain bunches. So contemporary scholars who work on this period of international style, however, favor the idea that artwork was consciously designed as a hybrid object, intermixing elements from different geographies. Um, and this ivory plaque from Mycenae, Greece, gives us a good sense of how how much in material and technology and visual representation and uh, representational content that these societies really continued to speak to each other. Um, this completes uh, the second video of um, of this week, um, and um, in the third video we will turn to the Hittite Empire. Um, and then really cover um, sort of architecture of ritual, architecture of water, 
uh, mostly um, from stone. So um, I'll see you in a bit.